Hi, this is Miles Marie, the Soldier of Mary. I'm going to present a dubbing of an interview between Luz Amparo Cuevas, uh, an interviewer, José María Íñigo, that was, uh, was recorded some time ago, to be honest, because uh, it was recorded in the, in the early 80s. But there's very little in English out there about these apparitions in Prado Nuevo, a little part of El Escorial, just outside of Madrid. So I'm going to present this to you, hopefully as part of a series of videos on the phenomena at Prado Nuevo, because I was very privileged to go there recently, and I want to try and share some of my experiences. Since about three years ago, there have been coming to pass a series of phenomena in the town of El Escorial, not far from Madrid. And thanks to the press, they are events that are becoming known day by day in both the Spanish area and in the rest of the world. Only a few days ago in El Pais, there appeared in the middle pages of the newspaper this article on the apparition. The protagonist of these apparitions is Mrs. Luz Amparo Cuevas, 51 years old, from the little town of Pesebre. Presently she lives in San Lorenzo de El Escorial. Because this matter is very well delicate, I'm not going to give any judgment on what's occurring or try and criticize it. Instead, I'm going to let the protagonist herself speak of the events that have appeared in so many newspapers, both here and abroad. She can explain the story from the beginning. Good evening, Mrs. Cuevas. Is it correct, Senora, the things we have read in the press that you have said that you have seen our Lord, our Lady, the angels and the devil himself? Yes, it is. And they spoke to you? Yes, they did. And where did all this happen? Well, the first time... Uh, can I speak about the stigmatas? Yes, very well. Well, the first time it happened... Well, the first time it happened, I was working in a house as an assistant, domestic assistant, and I was doing the ironing. And I heard a voice that said to me, pray the rosary for the peace in the world and for the conversion of sinners. I wasn't a practicing Catholic back then. I wasn't atheist either, but I wasn't a practicing Catholic. I wasn't going to the church. I wasn't confessing. I wasn't receiving Holy Communion. I was really shocked. And I went down to the, the, the porter and I told him what had happened and explained it and they wanted to know where it happened and I told them what happened how I heard a voice when I was dealing with the clothes and they said it was it was something because of a low blood pressure maybe you need to see a psychiatrist and the, the wife of the, the porter said that you should go to the psychiatrist or a doctor and I, um, I was thinking, I don't know what I was thinking back then. And the Lord told me when I saw him that he would give me tests of suffering. First I heard the voice and then I entered into the bedroom. And then when I entered the bedroom, the whole room was illuminated and I saw like a, a cotton cloud and upon the cloud the Lord was appearing once actually when I was in a clinic I saw I saw the same that I saw on that occasion and I wasn't thinking it was the Lord I thought it was just an effect of anesthesis uh, which they had told me it was an effect of anesthesis but but now I saw him, I saw the same person that, that I saw that same time in the clinic and I, I realized it was an effect of anesthesia or anything like that. It was something real. Well, and then he told me pray for the peace of the world and the conversion of sinners. We love each other. The world is in great danger. I went and told it to the to the porters again. How many times has this happened? Many times. It's happened many times. And it's happened since two years ago. Did you go to the psychiatrist like they said? No, because when the Lord told me I was going to have tests of suffering, I thought to myself, one of my children is going to die. And I wasn't believing, let's not say, I, I did, it's not that like I didn't believe in God, I, 
I thought some, I believe in some of the things he had done, but I wasn't really thinking much about God existing at that time. And they've only appeared to you in a house. No, also the virgin has appeared to me in a field. And she was very sorrowful. She said, pray the rosary, confess, go to Holy Communion. The Lord has been really, really forgotten. Confess your sins before going to Holy Communion, because there are many sacrilegious communions. Say the Holy Rosary. You can save the whole of humanity by praying the rosary, because the world is in great danger. Have there been witnesses? Yes, there have been many witnesses of the, st of the stigmatas. Wounds appear in my hands, in my feet, in my side, on my forehead. I haven't seen them, but I've seen videos of it. They are little holes. Many people have seen these holes, these wounds. Even a doctor has seen them. I called him. I wanted, I wanted him to look at them. But I refused to go into a hospital to be studied and for them to take blood from me. I didn't want to be studied. I, I knew, a, I knew a, a doctor who I really trusted, who was very Catholic, and I invited him to come and see, and he took the blood from the wound. And the blood disappeared when he went to take it. He, the doctor thought it wasn't a natural thing, and he couldn't give any explanation for what was going on. When did they appear, these wounds? Well, to begin with, to begin with, it happened for a whole week. Then it was Thursday and Friday. Then it was the first Fridays of the month. Now it tends to happen not every Friday, but, but many Fridays. Have there been many witnesses of this? Yes, there have been. And actually, one of the witnesses is here with us at this moment. Can we speak with her a moment to see what she will say about this? Good evening. Could you tell us a little bit about what you've seen? Many times I've seen this happening. They are holes in the hands, the forehead, like she's had a crown of thorns, the side, the feet. When she's in ecstasy in the bed, they are on top of each other, the, the legs, and there's like a, a hole going through them, like a, a wound going through them. The heart, the, the side, like I said, and and on the first Fridays of the month, a heart appears on the center of her of her chest. It was like she had been uh, whipped or, or been pricked, and many people have seen all this. And could you get this to come about yourself? No. And that's what people tend to say to me. It's not something I can provoke or anybody can provoke. A person couldn't do this to themselves. And it's one person said it could be done by parapsychology from a distance. But I don't know anything about this. I don't know anything about parapsychology. I've got too much work to do. I don't know anything about that. They've told me that I belong to some political group, a right-wing group. I don't know anything about right or left or centre. Only when the Blessed Virgin appeared, she told me I want people to pray the rosary across the world. She didn't tell me anything about left-wing or right-wing. Can I, can I say a bit more? Yes, of course. But some people say to me, I take money. They say, I, I don't take money. And people say, oh, you're getting money by going on television. Well, actually, you, the truth is you're not getting money. Well, the people say the same way you get money from the television, you get money from praying the rosary. I deny this. The most important thing for me is for the salvation of souls. Some of our team went to El Escorial and they saw some of the witnesses there and the witnesses were talking a lot about one particular thing that often there's 
there's a smell of roses. Yes, and some people are saying that I have a spray of some kind. And that I'm there. Look at me. Look at me kneeling there. I'm not able to do a, have a spray in my pocket. In the same way that God is able to give me the wounds, he's able to make a perfume. The other day, thousands and thousands, or at least a thousand people, according to the photo, were there as witnesses of this perfume. What do you say about this? Are you able to make this holy aroma? Yes or no? No. I can't provoke an aroma. This is only something that God can do. And what about this thing about by location that apparently has happened to you? Have you been in two places at the same time? Yes. Sometimes I've got the stigmata and I'm praying the rosary in another place or I'm playing the rosary in different t places at the same time. Various places at the same time. And we've got a witness to this here in the audience. What can you tell us of this? The first time she was eating in my house, having dinner, when my husband and my children took her to her house, she was already there and had been there all night. And when my husband came back, he told me, you got to sit down, because while she was with you eating dinner, she was also with her husband, and who was unwell and looking after him that evening. Imagine how surprised I was, and this has happened many times. Tell us, tell us something about some prophecies that you've said. Obviously, before, before the prophecies came to pass, obviously. The first one that happened, I said that the Holy Father, before he came to Spain, I said, the Pope is going to come to Spain He's going to be attempted to be assassinated, but he's not going to die. And this came to pass. And also in many other occasions, um, for, in, for instance, when the, when the coup d'etat, when the coup d'etat happened here. Yeah, the one in Madrid. I knew what was going to happen. I knew something was going to happen. And I said to Julita, who I was working with, I told her something's going to happen. And this is what's going to happen. But don't worry, because it's not going to, nothing's really going to happen. And I told it that night to everyone that something was going to happen in Madrid. And it, and it happened just as I said it was. The failed coup d'etat. Many thanks. We're not going to go into any more. We're going to take away or add from what you've said. These are the things that have come to pass in the press the last eight days and that have come to be known both in Spain and around the world. Many thanks, Luthamparo. So there we go. That concludes the interview. I hope you have found this uh, video interesting. I've got loads more to share on these apparitions now. I'm reading through the official book on the apparitions, which is an amazing book, really filled of anecdotes, eyewitness accounts. Luz Amparo Guedas is essentially another Padre Pio. You may not notice from that recording, but she was essentially illiterate. She had no schooling at all. And the profundity of the messages that she has given to us and the eyewitness accounts linked to all the things that happened including stories of conversions including stories of knowledge that she had of the secrets of souls and moreover the fruits that have come from these apparitions homes for the caring of the elderly religious vocations catholics living a common life living lives of poverty and devotion. Hopefully I'll share more about these apparitions. May Almighty God bless you. May Our Lady intercede for you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.